Hey quilters, uh, Marianne Fontana, Fontana Originals, doing, uh, this is one of my new patterns, and a lot of these are being designed just for quilts of valor. Uh, this is called Friendship Stars. Now, it's actually very easy. Uh, it finishes at about uh, 60 by 76, and it consists of two blocks, very simple, an Irish chain, and a simple star. And it's called the Friendship Star, and that's why we get Friendship Star Expert and a pattern designer. And so I use AccuQuilt cutting dies in everything I do. But never fear, I realize not everybody has them, or nor, do, nor do they want to purchase them. So there will be rotary cutting directions available with every pattern that's purchased. And each pattern's eight. I've already made two blocks. And I just wanted to share with you if uh, you're using the cubes, you basically need an eight inch cube, shapes one, two, and three. And then I used a two and a half inch strip die and a four and a half inch strip die, which of course you, if you have them, use them. If not, you could just cut them with a you know, ruler and a rotary uh, cutter. And then I used a three inch applique star. Okay, so those are the two blocks. They finish at 12 inches. And they're on point, as I said. So these are the pieces, and I'm going to tell you the uh, pieces, the number of pieces you need for one block only. And then you can just multiply it out, or if you want, you can purchase the pattern. Now, the purpose of the video is so you can make it if you do not want to purchase the pattern. Um, it, this, the instructions will always be free on YouTube. But here it is. This will finish at 12 inch. We used an 8 inch cube. This is shape one, so there's one red. There are four white, there are eight blue, two on each side, and then there are eight white. So that is to make the chain block. The simple star is shape one. There are five white pieces, and then there are four sets of red and blue half square triangles. These finish at four inches. These finish at four inches. Here you go. You just need four of each, four red, four blue for each block, and five white. And you can sew them together. I'm going to do the friendship star block first. And it's really just a simple star block, and it consists of two half square triangles, red and blue, and I have the pieces here ready to sew. So I'm going to move that aside, and I actually have it kept over here, and I'm going to zoom in a little so you can watch me. And I like to put one on each side, and make sure you're sewing them right sides together. And a lot of times I will turn them in the direction that I need to lay them, which helps me make less mistakes, let's just say. I'm more likely to sew them together correctly. Now, if you have an AccuQuilt cutting system, you're going to sew from this point down to the other point. And if you don't, match them up point to point all the way. You will have a little dog ear there later on. You'll need to clip off. But then place it under your presser foot. Don't start before the fabric. You don't need little dovetails to put on it. Just start on top of the fabric and take a few slow stitches. Okay, I'm going to address, adjust my uh, length a little bit. I make to make it just a little longer. So anyway, so I'm going to just go ahead. I've matched up this other side. I'm holding my finger here and I'm just going to sew them across. And that's all. And I'm going to chain piece them. And that just simply means you're just going to keep sewing more pieces together without cutting your thread. And of course, it makes a little chain in between. All right, so that's it. And in case you haven't noticed, I'm using a quarter inch foot, and I really do recommend it if you cannot. If you do not have a quarter inch foot, get some masking tape and measure with the needle down a quarter of an inch with your best ruler and put a piece of tape there so you have a guide to sew on, or you'll be very unhappy when you try and put the block together. And that's all you have to do to sew the two pieces together. And I always like to press them to one side, and typically the dark side. And in this case, I'm going to press to the blue. But I'm not going to press, press. I'm just going to finger press at this point. And I'm not actually going to go to a hot iron until I'm done with the block. Let me show you how to put the block together. Okay. 
And now we're going to take the uh, four that we just sewed together and we're gonna lay them out with the red side touching the middle. And there is our friendship star. Now, normally you'll sew these two together and then sew, you know, in groups or sew the strip together and then sew this strip together and then sew this strip together. Now, I like to sew the whole block together at one time. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to sew down here. Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew down here. Then I'm going to take this piece and go over and I'm going to sew down here and I'm going to leave them and sew them in a row together, chaining them as I go. Now, if I had 10 blocks, I'd go back and repeat the process. I wouldn't be touching these yet, and I would go back and I would sew another one of these. So you'd have to sew one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but you're chaining them the whole time. Now, if you're careful, they'll stay very nice and put together for you, um, but you can always cut them apart if you have a problem. But I like to do it because when I'm done, these will be sewn together as nice as you please. Okay, and then all I have to do is go back up at the beginning where I started and then sew this one to here, this one to here, and this one to here. Now, why would I do that? Well, for two reasons. It saves me sewing and stopping and cutting and sewing and stopping and cutting. And for the other reason, it almost guarantees... I will not put the blocks together wrong when I sew the rows together. And I've done that hundreds of times. And I have found this almost foolproof for me anyway. So uh, I'm going to go down to the sewing board and I'm going to sew the one block together and show you how cool it is. But you can certainly sew it in the traditional manner and sew these three together. Then sew these three together. Then sew these three together. And then sew them this way and make your block. Uh, it's a matter of personal style. Um, people who know me know I have what I call my need for speed. And I think it was because I was born and raised in New York City, and now I don't live there. So I still run around doing things, and I like to do things fast, but I always like them to look good. So let's go to the sewing machine. I've laid my block down to the left of the sewing machine so I can watch the pattern to make sure I sew the sections together. And as I showed you on the design table, I'm going to start with the first and second block in the first row in the top row. And I'm going to... Oop. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with my foot pedal on the fabric. And I do that just because I find it doesn't eat the fabric or it's less likely to. So now I'm going to go to shape uh, the one and two blocks in the second row, which is the one on the left and the center block. And I am making sure I'm putting them right sides together. And I can actually, if I haven't sewn off this fabric entirely, I can actually just slide this underneath. And then I'm going to match up the end. And I always stop with my needle down because it acts like an extra hand. And actually, it looks like it's going to bunch. So I'm going to just move it a little. And now I'm going to go to the third row and take the first and second blocks, which is another white square and a piece of the star. And I'm going to turn it over and sew those. And I'm just finger pressing these as I go didn't leave enough there, so I'll pick up my presser foot. And if the fabric starts to bunch a little, just pick up your presser foot. Okay, so that was three uh, rows that I did, so I would start another block if I were making more than one block. But since I'm not, I'm just doing a demo. I'm going to cut this off. And if I haven't said this before, anytime you start a new pattern, cut and make one block only because if you cut them wrong and they're all cut and you start sewing them you've cut all your fabric whereas if you've done one block you've only lost one block 
and you can probably still get by. Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, I've, ate, I've done that. All right, so now I'm on the third piece. I know I was kind of chatting, but um, I've taken, that's the third piece in the first row. And now I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And this actually is the second row. This is the first piece, the second piece. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to get another star, star piece. And it has to face this way. And I'm going to flip it over just like you'd sew any two pieces together. The only difference is these are being actually connected as I go. Now I'm at the bottom, so this is the first and second block in the row, and this is the third or the last of the nine blocks that go in this. This is a nine patch. Get it started. I always like to get it started, then I come down and hold the end. It really helps me sew a straighter seam. Now if I were doing 10 or 12 blocks or whatever, at this point, I would lay the three down. I would count one, two, three, and I would trim the threads, and I would put three more up and lay it down, which would be another block, and cut the threads and put three more up and lay it down. And now they're all set. All they need to do is be turned, and you can sew the other sides together. And I always recommend when you're dealing with white blocks, wherever you can, try to sew to the dark side. If it gets too bunchy and fabricy, then just let it lay flat. I'm going to just fold over. This is the three pieces together. I'm going to just fold over one side. And I'll be honest with you, this really wants to go to the light side. Let's see. No, I think I can switch it. And now I will always try to, if you're doing them in opposite ways, you can get your seams to butt together really nice. And if you hold your finger there and then spread your fabric out, you'll always get a really good seam. So press her foot down on the fabric. I always stop at the seam because now I can go and get the other pieces. And I'm going to go to the dark side. Now, if you know I have not ironed these with a hot iron, I'm just using my fingers. And I'm making sure though the seams are snug and tight and smooth and even. Oh, give it a little tug sometimes going over seams. One of the things I find my sewing machine always puts a heavy weight on the presser foot. And when you're going over big seams, it's a really good idea to lighten up the weight. I'm not sure why they do that. You'd think it'd be adjustable easier. Like Anyway. That one's done, and I'll cut it off. Now, if I had those 10 blocks, I'd be doing the next one in a row. Because why not? You know, and then I can save more thread and do the one side. And then when I'm done, I'm going to just turn them all around. I'm going to open up this side. I'm going to fold this side over. Okay, and we're going to remember we're going to press to the dark side. So I'm going to turn that first piece here under. A little finger swipe. So now it's going the direction I want it, under here. Yeah, see, that's all, just a little. And then I gotta get this one going that way, and I'm actually gonna slide it to the seam, and it fits snug. And if you're not sure if it's even, come out a little further and line up the seam a little further down, and you'll get a straight line. And I hold on to the seam right to there. And I obviously let, let go and then here. And I'm gonna, this is already to the red. So this is gonna be to here. Okay. And I, I'm holding the back of the fabric because that's a big seam to go over. And I try to keep my finger there as long as I can without sewing through it. So 
Don't ask. I did it on my long arm. I still have a scar. I don't know if you could see. There's a little hole right in the middle of my finger. Yeah, it went in that side, came out over here. Lucky, no real damage. It kind of was weird. But be careful. Okay, so this is done. And we're going to go back to the board. Yeah, just to show you. Yeah, look at this. Isn't this pretty? Here we go. And look at the look at the seams. Nice, right? And when this thing is pressed, it's going to be beautiful. And all you need to do is make 12. Now, just if you're doing rotary cutting, these all finish at 4 inches. These are 4 inch half square triangles. These are 4 inch squares. Okay, it finishes at 12. So 4, 4, and 4 is 12. You got 12 inch blocks. They will be at this point 12 and a half inches until you sew them in. And they'll be 12 inch finished. The chain block consists of one red four and a half inch cut or four inch finished square, four white, four and a half inch cut squares, and then on each corner, two blue and two white. All the way around and note that the blue is facing in so you're going to get like an x shape when you finish them if they're sewn in the right direction and if they're not you won't ask me how i know okay so there we go oh you know what i did i doubled up on these got extras that's probably two here yep Okay, now the easiest way to sew this together is to sew the, uh, these are, just so you know, these are two inch finished squares. Cut it two and a half if you're rotary cutting them. Okay, I should have one more around here someplace, which I'm sure I do. Oh, there it is. Okay, so, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just sew the two blues together, all of them. Blue and white, blue and white, blue and white, blue and white. Uh, actually, if I sew them white, blue, blue, white, I'll then have little four patches I can sew together. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these first, two and two, and then make it into a four patch. And then we'll put the block together, and I'm going to sew it together the same way I sewed the other, going across and down. I just finished sewing the chain together, and it was just... You know, blue and white, white and blue. I just like to do it that way. You could sew them all one way if it makes you feel more comfortable. But I do this because then I'm ready to sew them again in the other direction. And then what I can do is just turn them like this. And I'll open this one. Now, keep in mind, I am going to try to keep everything pressed to the dark side. So I'll just gently finger press it like that. And then I'll go to the next one and I'll open it. And since I sewed them opposite, they're already in a checkerboard. And I don't have to cut the string connecting them I can just fold it over push it down right into that little space and it's like a perfect fit then foot pedal up foot pedal press her foot down all the way to the seam <clears throat> see how it got out of line line it back up and go now, in this case, because they were sewn together, I'm just going to clip that other one. I could have clipped them in twos before, but I kind of wanted to show you um, how they came off the uh, and their string together. Okay, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take this one, and yep, glue up. And again, I'm not pressing. I'm just using my nail. You can use a little wooden board, or you can press them. Just like that, underneath. up again. Always stop with your needle down. And I'm going to cut this one off. And this also assures I don't lose any of them. I have over the years tried to create these or do these little steps to help me make less mistakes. 
because it's very frustrating and clothing should be a pleasure. Okay, well that's three. Uh, and another one over here on the side, but those are what you need. You need four of these per block and I think this seems pretty good. Okay, and those are two and a half inch cut squares. To put the block together, you'll sew your little four patches again, blues pointing in and out like an X. Make sure it looks correct before you start sewing. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna sew these together in a row, and then I'm gonna go back and put the others on. Row one, point this in, line it up. Oh, this block's a little small. Let me get another this one. is why I always make extras. Okay, so right sides together. Foot press, press her foot down. And I'm gonna just check this, it looks a little off. And always make sure that you're not boating right here, see right there, that it's not sticking in or out too much. And the easiest way to do that is if you pull from the underneath side, you know, get a hold of this and tug it. Just a little. That was the first block. Here's the second one. You know, the second unit. This has got the red center. Under the foot pedal. Straighten it out. Here's the last side, all right, pointing up so it's in. Oh, looks pretty good. And again, you're sewing a four patch, which is four and a half inches before it's sewn in, and this is four and a half inches. All right, so that is one section of the block, and we're gonna back it up, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna open it. And I gotta put the last row on. Now keep in mind, you have to make an X. So it's gotta go that way. It doesn't hurt. I always check with it right sides up. So I have a way of turning things upside down accidentally. All right, and just line it up. Make sure it's there. Next one. the center now we're going back and remember now it's opposite it's got a point up okay it's an X and you get you just rotate the block and it'll so you get the colorway that looks like the picture And if you want to at this point, I do it sometimes, and I'm gonna put these out, so I'm just gonna finger press them. Only because it saves a little more wiggling when you're by the sewing machine. And between me and the camera, oopsie, between me and the camera, and the foot pedal, and the knee lift, <laughs> and the scissors, and all the junk I have pushed aside that you can't see. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm gonna fold this over, go back and sew them together. Okay, it's still folded over. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go down and match the seam up. I do not sew end to end. I sew seam to seam. And the reason I do that is when you sew things together, people look at your seams. They don't look at your ends. They look at your seams. So. If this seam is a little off up here. If your edge is a little off here, when you sew your quarter inch seam over there, no one's gonna see it, so. I don't want, see it looks a little high there. I'm gonna just pull it from behind. Okay. All right, I had my finger on that seam. Now I'm gonna go to the next one. 
The red is underneath facing up, the blue is below facing down. Making sure it's kissing right here. I'm not too far out, where's that red? Can I see it? Oh, I'm holding both of them. There it is, see? Okay, I know I'm on. Stop at the same needle down. Now I'll go to the end and move this. Turn it around, open this side, and fold this side over. And again, I'm looking red. I want the dark to go down, because that's the red. I'm looking where the red is, and the blue is up. And I'm just doing a little seam uh, swipe there with my finger. I'm going to get the two pieces. And I'm going to slide them together so they kiss. I like to call it, it's, you get the fabric to kiss the seams. Nice. Okay, press your foot onto my fabric. Stop at the seam. Fix that back there. Fix this one here. Make sure the seams go the right way. Pull it down. Okay, last one to the end. Down. And it's, and it's done. done. Let's get this. And here is the finished. And look at the points. Good. Yeah, I think we're good. And it's not pressed yet. So. Now that you've made all your blocks, let's just mm -hmm. talk briefly about the layout. Uh, just let me caution you. It's a little tricky, but it's easy. Like, is that like an oxymoron? Anyway, your blocks, your 12 blocks are fine just the way they are. The stars. But with the chain blocks, with six of them, we're going to cut out two inch two 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 inch star no these are three inch stars excuse me three inch stars i have fusible on the back and i'm going to peel them off and i'm going to fuse them onto the center of the red square of only six of the blocks okay so i'm going to put those aside and then now i want you to see this see this this is the chain block it's on point so here are the six there's one two three four five six where the stars are and then there are half squares here let me get a marker to show you. There are half squares here. And there's a quarter square here. Alright, so this is how it fits. That's how the blocks go. You can see. Alright, so that's kind of how it lays out. Okay, when you look at it, all of a sudden it makes sense, right? But we need to cut some of these chain blocks in half so that they fit here, and some of them in quarters and they fit here. Now, I need to warn you, these are kind of opposite because typically if you're gonna cut a piece here, you're gonna cut a quarter square triangle so there's a uh, straight a grain here and it's not biased and stretchy, you're gonna have a stretchy edge. And it's the same thing with this, but it's the easiest way to do it. And you just need to be a little careful when you do the sides. Um, and I've done it. It's not a problem, but you do need to go slow and you do not, you should not pull the fabric. So I'm going to show you how to cut them. I'm going to cut one block in half and show you how they would fit here. And then I'm going to cut half of that in quarters to show you the end. As we meant, as I mentioned, you're going to do six full blocks and they're the ones with the stars. And then we're going to take five of them and cut them in half to make 10 halves. Okay. I'm going to set my stuff out of the way. I have one block lined up. I'm going to actually just turn it. Excuse me. So it's a little easier for me. And I'm going to pay attention to that point. This point, this point, this point, this point, and that point, because I need to cut it exactly in half. Not almost. I need to cut it exactly in half. 
And in this case, you need to measure as many times as you can to get half. And sometimes half is easier on one side than the other. And I only do that because, you know, your sewing is never going to be perfect. You're going to be close. And you're going to have to make a value judgment here. And I'm thinking this side seems to line up a lot better for me than the other side. So here I go. I'm going to be brave. And I'm going to cut once. Hold this firmly. You don't want it slipping. Okay. And you're going to do that to five blocks. And you're going to set them aside. And then you're going to go get the last block. Because you made 12. So, so let's pretend this was the last one. And we didn't cut it. But we're going to cut it the exact same way. And we're going to keep it lined up perfectly. And then we're going to turn around and cut it in the opposite direction very carefully. Okay, I'm good with that. From there. This is what, okay, so there we go. Actually, I didn't mean to cut the four, but there you go. There's the four. And those will be for your corners, and they actually fit on this way. So let's look. Here's your block. And if you're sewing to the end... You're sewing it here. See how it fits? And if you're sewing, putting it like this. See, so that's the half that goes on the sides, and that's the quarter. So the quilt is done.